When using an MVC framework, it's quite easy to forget that not everything is a perfect model, view, or controller. It's also very easy to forget some of the basic OOP principles you've learned along the way if you start getting used to the framework way of things. I've done it, and so have most other developers at some point in time. The concepts that we've been covering in past episodes go right out the window, and we bind tightly to our framework, which can lead to several headaches later. For instance, if our business logic changes, we wind up having to change some code related to interacting with the framework that could lead to unnecessary challenges, tech suite, test suite executions, or bugs. Sometimes, putting an extra layer between you and the framework code is worth the extra effort to maintain it. It'll ultimately protect you, and it'll lessen your work and code rot in the future. That being said, not everything needs it, and going in trying to abstract everything will likely ensure you never finish your project. However, there are some low-hanging fruit that you can go after, and we're going to look at an example of how to abstract away one of the common pitfalls of MVC frameworks, fat controllers. So here we have a controller based off Laravel's implementation, where store is a resourceful route to store a new object to the persistence layer. We get our current user, and we instantiate a new project based off of user input. Then, if the project saves successfully, it'll create the new project, link it to the current user, queue up an email notification, set a session success message, then redirect to the new project route. If it fails, it'll return some error notifications, and then it'll return the form. Now this is all fine if we don't plan on using anything else in here in different locations, but what about if we want to run a task from the command line, or if we have background workers that need to create projects? Well then this needs to be broken out in some way, or you're going to start asking, how do I call a controller from the command line? Let's take a look at one way to do this. Let's take a look at one way to do this. We have a clone of this file called projectcontrollerabstracted.php, so let's peel this logic away from the controller now. We have a project creator class at the top of the file that has an errors protected property. It has a get errors method so as an accessor. It has a succeeded method that'll tell us whether the project succeeded in being created. Then we have a create for user method that accepts a user and an attributes array. From there, we create a new project with that attributes array. If the project saves successfully, we'll associate the project with the user's projects, and then we'll queue up the email. If that doesn't work, we'll set an error message, and then return the project regardless of the outcome. Now down in Project Controller, logic's been shortened up a bit. We create a new project creator, then we call create for user, and we pass in auth user, which is our current user, and input get protect to get our attributes from the project array that came over the post. We'll store the result to project, and if project creator succeeded, We'll set a success flash message and redirect. Otherwise, we'll set a flash error message and output and send the erroneous project back to the view. So as you can see, this didn't take much work to abstract, but we can use this in multiple locations now. The controller can use it, the command line can use it, a queue worker can use it. It serves many purposes. We still use other parts of the framework inside of our project creator, namely the mail facade and some ORM associated related things but we've still abstracted it in an important way. The rest can be done at a later time should the need actually arise. Now, even though this works, I want to present one more alternative, following what Matt Wynn presents in his hexagonal rails talk. Some users may find this overkill, and in small apps, it probably is. But in larger apps, this may make more sense. If you've done some Java before, or have worked with enterprise applications, or spent any time doing GUI apps, this should look kind of familiar to you. Let's take a look. In the project controller listener file, we've told our project creator class to accept a listener of some sort in its constructor and then store it to this listener. We've deleted the succeeded method and error message handling things because they were really just a means of signaling failure back up to the controller without using something like exceptions. If the project save is successful, we have the same operations as before, but we return this listener project creation succeeded and then we send in project. And if the project creation fails, we send back this listener project creation failed. Now in our project controller, our store method has gotten much smaller. We instantiate a new project creator and we pass in this, which means that the controller itself will become a listener in the project creator. Then we will return project creator create user four, passing in the same values as before. Our controller then has two protected methods so that routing endpoints cannot activate them. Project creation succeeded, will flash a success message and then redirect to the new project like before. Project creation failed, we'll flash an error notice, and then send back the view with the project attached. If you didn't quite follow that, the project controller instantiates a project creator and passes itself in. Then it returns the result of create for user. The return value of create for user will wind up being either project creation succeeded or project creation failed on the controller, since that is the registered listener inside of the project creator object. 
This is more of an OO approach rather than a standard procedural one. It's quite a clean way to approach the problem and it potentially makes the project creator even more reusable, or at least with more of a tell don't ask interface. Anything I mentioned before, a CLI script, QWorker, etc., can simply pass itself or some object that implements those two succeeded fail methods into the project creator and have the appropriate method invoked when ready. If the benefits of this don't seem apparent at first, don't worry. If you check out some of the reading I recommended in the first episode and check out Matt's hexagonal rails talk, I think you'll get the hang of it. Now, whenever this project creator gets relocated to a new home in the file system, it's up to you where to place it. I'd probably claim it to be a service object and we just place it in my models directory somewhere. Others may have a separate directory altogether for non-persistence related models. The choice is yours. Next episode, we'll be looking at ways to take advantage of functional programming concepts within our object-oriented world.